my gaming friends and family, members of the PGP. How you guys doing tonight? This uh, should look really, really weird. Like, really weird. Because this is, this is not normal. Alright? <laughs> How you guys feeling on this Wednesday night? Listen, I just I just couldn't stay away from you guys. Okay, that's what it is. We had we had so much fun, so much fun last night that I couldn't help it, and I wanted to spend time with you guys tonight. Can you guys hear me? Okay, Cox says no sound. Can you guys can you guys hear me? Check one two three. Testing. You hear me? Okay. Maybe you have to refresh Cox. Might be something kind of going on with it. You hear me loud and clear? Volume is slightly lower. The mic is a little bit further away. Uh, I'll adjust it a little bit. It's it's telling me that the mic should be actually louder than normal. I'm actually peaking. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But it is a little bit further away from me. You can see the mic right here. I got a little hat for him the other day. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Yes. You've read the title. I am going to be building Miss PG's new gaming PC tonight. We've got multiple views here. Uh, you'll actually be able to look over my shoulder. I can show you some things. And I can actually grab this camera and move it around and show you stuff inside the computer and whatnot. So whether you've built hundreds of gaming PCs, whether you've never built one before, uh, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to just chill and hang out. And we're going to do this from scratch. Uh, so you can ask questions why I chose specific components, uh, all sorts of stuff. We can talk about City of Heroes, whatever you guys want to talk about, let's hang out. Michael says, why no NVMe? Uh, good question, Michael. Uh, you are going to get, of course, as you know, faster read and write speeds out of an NVMe being plugged directly into the board, not having to go through a cable. But working in the PC industry over the last seven years, for my wife's specific application, I did not want to go with NVMe because uh, she stores a lot of critical data like photos and things on there. And if you need to recover data from an NVMe, of course, it's a little more complicated than just grabbing a, a couple of cables or a dock and plugging it in and accessing it on another computer. You're going to have to get that specific dock made for the NVMe because it's not standard cables. So I had a lot of customers in the past who had NVMe's and it crashed and we had to get a specific dock to read it and it was just it was just a pain in the booty so for her a standard standard ssd makes perfect sense for her so let me show you guys the components real quick this is the board the z390 oris ultra she is rocking the i9 9900k 32 gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM. She wanted the white with the RGBs, of course. The 860 Evo, one terabyte SSD. Uh, she did go with the Kraken X62 water cooler, which I'm hoping fits because this is uh, got two 140s on it. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed. And the RTX. 2060 super the 8 gig video card so we're gonna build this bad boy from scratch i don't know if you can see it a little evga 700 watt power supply i love evga power supplies uh believe it or not i'm a big fan of seasonic used to be because they have a 10-year warranty and i put a seasonic in my computer and it died after one month you know you could have saved so much money by getting an AMD processor and motherboard. The cool thing, Kevin, is this i9 was actually sent to me for free. So I'm definitely going to build around it. And I, I'm a, I'm a fan of the Ryzen's. Uh, AMD has really stepped up their game. But uh, I'm still an Intel guy at heart. That's just me personally. But yes, the 9900K was sent to me. So it just makes sense to go with that, right? You know? So I'll just kind of, we'll small talk as we go around, commentate, put this thing together. Now what I like to do first, let's get this case out of the way, actually. What I personally like to do, and cr critique my methods all you want, ask questions, as I said, I welcome it. I actually prefer to put most of the components on the board first. 
That way you're not tight, kind of cramped, working in the case, trying to get to things. So what I'll do is pull the board out here. But so do you have an AMD machine, Kevin? Use Ryzen? Are you an IT professional? I actually worked for a company building custom gaming PCs for the last seven years. But they actually closed last year, uh, so I no longer work there. But I did that for ab about seven years. Let's put that bad boy where you can see it. All right, let's go ahead and get this CPU in here. And maybe people who aren't familiar with building PCs can learn a thing or two. I think that'd be pretty awesome. I hate, I'm not going to lie though, I hate this case. Look at this. What is this? It's some kind of like a, a Rubik's Cube? Did the stuff with the place you worked for get sorted out or is it still going on? Still ongoing. Still ongoing, sorty. But no, I, I hate what this i9 comes in. Like, look, I already don't know how to put it back. Like, really? What is this? It's impractical, but looks awesome. I guess. I guess you're right. It looks cool, and that's what matters, you know. But uh, we'll go ahead. Hopefully, you guys, I know it's not zoomed way in. But uh, hopefully, you can kind of see what's going on. So we're going to remove the cover from the CPU socket. you got to be careful with any uh, computer that you're setting up because... The Intel boards, the pins are going to be on the board, uh, so you got to be real careful. You don't want to bend any of those. I've seen people before hold stuff over the top of it, drop it, and bend one of those pins. Oh, you're going to be so mad at yourself. But then with the the AMD builds, you've got the pins on the CPU, so you got to be careful with that. So you just got to take your time. You know, don't get in a hurry. Super easy to line up on the Intel boards. You're actually going to have two little indentions on the left and right side. You can see them up at the top right there. Uh, then you're gonna have two indentions up on top on the slot on the board. So you're just gonna gently set that down in there. And if it, if it doesn't feel right, listen, when in doubt, pull it out. Just like we talk about in City of Heroes, right? And go ahead and seat it down. It, it's, you're gonna know, right? It's just, it's gonna feel right when you drop it in there. Keyboard Warrior, how are you? Nothing is more fun. Nothing is more fun than putting everything together right and it does not even power on. It happens sometimes, Toad Killer. It does happen. You'll put everything together. Uh, let me give you another tip. Do not do your wire management right after you put the build together. Leave it kind of messy uh, and make sure that it posts. Then go through and do your wire management because oh, let me tell you, you're going to be real mad. When you do that and you power it on and nothing, nothing happens. <laughs> and you also want to look at on your board, uh, the slots, some of them are kind of weird on um, if you want to go in A1 and B1 or A1 and A2 in, in the particular slots. If you only have two sticks of RAM, these are two 16 gig sticks. I tried to get four 8 gig sticks to occupy all of the slots, but Nowhere had it in stock. So right now we're going with the 216s. We'll probably bump it up to 64 later on. But this particular board uh, prefers to occupy A1 and A2 first. So we're just going to drop them in those two slots. Get a nice click. Ooh, last two builds posted first try. It's what we're hoping for tonight, my chemical crash. We're going to finish this right here on the stream. So I hope you guys have got your coffee or your popcorn, whatever you prefer. Sorty says he kind of wants me to break it. What, Sorty? What? <laughs> if you put together a few, it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, honest to goodness, and I'm not bragging because it was my job. I mean, I've probably put together anywhere from five to 700 computers over the years. A lot, a lot of PCs. Put together uh, plenty of them in my day. Now... Uh, what we're going to do, I'm actually going to go ahead and seat this inside of the case. I don't know how well you guys can see the case. Uh, it actually has three RGB fans. This is the Corsair IQ case. 
Uh, that are intaking in the front. We're gonna mount that radiator on top for hers the way that it's set up currently. Um, I do not have an outtake fan for the rear. Uh, apparently they did not send it. Uh, so we're gonna have to go by Best Buy or somewhere tomorrow and pick one up. But for tonight, it'll be okay. Got a nice face cam, I do. Well, that's good to hear VK. <laughs> And what, what I really like about this board, this Oris board, see if I can do this without breaking anything. It has the IO shield built in. How cool is that, guys? For any of the tech people that are in the stream, how cool is that? The IO shield is built into the board. That is so cool. That's really convenient. You don't have to worry about losing it. Pretty awesome. So let's see if we can get this bad boy seated in here. Luckily, all of the posts are exactly where I need them for this build. So, I don't have to go around and try to get them to go in place. All right. There we go. Fits nice and snug. Now, I'm a big fan of... Really big fan of full towers. This is a mid case. But I also like how an ATX board really kind of fills it up. You see what I'm saying? Like when you look at it. I love that. I hate when you get a small board and put it in a giant case. It just looks goofy, doesn't it? Build the. I put in my own IO shield. I've seen some custom ones. I know they uh, they can be interesting to say to say the least. Definitely. Let's see where we put those screws. Well, before we get real deep into this, guys. I really do want to say thank you for you guys hanging out for something like this. I realize it's not playing games, but I feel like gaming PCs and PC gaming go hand in hand, right? And it, this is really good knowledge to have to be able to build your own PC. You don't have to pay someone to work on it for you, you know. It costs hundreds of dollars sometimes in labor to have somebody build a PC for you, you know. And as I said, I can move this around, so check this out. If you guys want a close look at something, if you're like PG... Why would you do that? What is that? Check this out. Woo! We can get real close and look. Oh, my whistler's not wet, so that was terrible. But look how sexy that thing is. I don't use the word sexy around here very often. That is one sexy board, let me tell you. But yeah, we can walk around with this thing, so it's pretty cool. That back up there. All right, so let's get these screws in here. Let's go ahead and set out nine of them. Okay. Three, six, and nine. I want to have you, baby. Please give me your seat. Moving on. Uh, thank you for the two dollars, my friend. All right, let's get these bad boys seated now. If if you were putting an air cooler in here, me personally, I would go ahead and mount the air cooler as well. You'll thank yourself later. For this specific application with the water cooler, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the board down in here. But definitely go ahead and mount that air cooler. Put everything on the board that you can before you drop it in the case. It'll, it'll make your life much easier. That's not me before someone asks because I... <laughs> Here's the thing, Sorty, and everybody here. Someone has been making accounts and trolling me by donating money to me and then leaving a, like a funny message. I can't have that be the top dono. <laughs> Thank you, my chemical crash. Woo! I hadn't had time to put it up there yet. You saved the day. I'll put you up there at the top for the $2.99. Now, I do want to thank that person for the $2. You know, I mean, thank you for that. Uh, if you need or want me to refund it, if it's just for trolling purposes, I'll gladly do so. Uh, but I'll, I'll put you up there in my chemical crash. But yeah, they've been, they've been making accounts to troll me by donating and leaving a, a weird message. I mean, it, I guess I, that I should take that as a compliment. I mean, would you guys take it as a compliment? If someone trolled you and they gave you money and then trolled you? Like they pay me to troll me. 
I mean, that sounds like a, a good situation to be in, you know? I'm just saying. <laughs> Michael says, good deal. My Chemical Crash says, hey, hey, troll me all you want. <laughs> uh, let me get you up there for top dono. I got to stretch out here a little bit. All right, My Chemical Crash. Uh, VK Camara. Oh, my gosh. Comes in at the last moment, literally as I'm typing it. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, guys. I didn't expect donations while I'm building a PC. <laughs> Thank you for that. But we now have the motherboard seated in here. It's screwed in so we can slowly pick it up. One thing I do want to note is that the first thing I do as well is I undo all of the... Anything holding these cables together, bread ties, whatever it is, and just kind of get them the heck out of the way. You know, that way you've got room to work. This is worth $5. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you, VK. I think it's fun, you know, just a bunch of people chilling, hanging out, building a PC together. I think that's pretty awesome. So let's see. Moving on, let me go ahead and find all of my other components here. We're going to go ahead and get the power supply mounted in here. That's going to add some serious wires to this. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. So funny. For those of you that build PCs, what's your favorite brand of power supply? Modular? No. And this is going to be another very unpopular opinion, Michael. I am not a fan of modular power supplies. That's extremely unpopular. And uh, I'll tell you why. I'm real weird when it comes to this stuff. Real weird when it comes to this. I'm not actually plugging anything in yet with the power supply. We're just mounting it in the case. I'm not going to plug anything in yet. I'm just going to mount it in there and kind of push everything to the side. What GPU and CPU did you pick? The RTX 2060 Super. And uh, what else did you ask? The CPU, the i9-9900K. She doesn't need more than that. The only game she plays is World of Warcraft and Skyrim occasionally, and that's it. Uh, she does run a decal, final decal shop. There'll be more than enough to run what she needs. Vote for Tulsi Gabbard. I'll give the best head kiss mark kiss mark. Thank you for the 315, my friend. I, listen, I'm not gonna, I'm, you know, yeah, I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> <laughs> you use Corsair. Corsair does make good stuff, yeah. I've always used the the EVGA power supplies, and I've I've been a big fan of them. They've held up really well for me. Uh, but this is the 80 plus bronze 700 watt. Uh, this case does have um, a vent in the bottom, a filtered vent. So we're going to go ahead and put that fan on the power supply facing down in this case. So we're going to slide it in. Fairly simple to mount, literally just slide it in. And right here along the bottom, we're gonna pop four screws in that it comes with. $5 from them and it's a Taco Bell date night. Yes, yes. What about monitor? What did you pick for that? She already has a monitor. I believe it's a, a 24 inch ViewSonic, if I'm not mistaken. It's one of the borderless designs. I don't know the exact specs on it, but uh, I do know that's the brand. All right, let's line up those mounting holes. But I like to get all these things mounted real quick, and then we'll run wires and whatnot. The fun part's going to be the water cooler. Sometimes that can be a two-person job, depending on how it mounts. Um, I didn't have a lot of customers request the Kraken X62, so I, I've only mounted a few of those. I'm a big air cooler guy. What do you guys, let me get a get a poll here. 48 people, look at that, I've already cut myself. 
already cut myself. Uh, water cooled versus air cooled. Let me hear it. You guys already know my stance. I'm not a big fan of water cooled, uh, but that's due to personal experience. I, I had a water cooled system at one point and the pump went out and ever since then I kind of stayed away from it, you know? But I have plenty of customers that uh, that are big fans of water cooled systems and I, I fully get it. Don't forget the chroma thermal paste. We got to RGB everything, man. Everything. Vilter Decky says liquid cool. What do you have on your PC, guys? You have to admit the PC building lingo is kind of hot. Coffee girl, yep, yep. See, it's what it's how I got my wife. You know, I walked up to her and I was like, "How much RAM you got in that PC?" And she was like, "Whoo, whoo!" And next thing you know, we went to Taco Bell for our first date, and we were married the week after. You know. It is what it is. All right, so we now have the motherboard CPU, RAM, and power supply mounted inside the computer here. Now let's go ahead actually and just throw that SSD in here. Why not? What's really also cool about this case, I love that a lot of cases are going, if you look at the main camera here, where they cover up the power supply right here. I love that. For hiding all of your wires, you can just shove all of your excess wires kind of in this space in front right here. And then any wires you need to bring out, you can bring out of the back and bring through the side. Through these, through these little holes right here. Hello. Uh, or you can bring it up through the bottom right here. Hello. Down here. Uh, so it's it's really cool to have. And like I said, this this is a mid case, by the way. This is This is not a full size tower. So let's go ahead and spin it around the back here. Now this has a couple of different ways to mount your SSD. I'm actually gonna turn it around this way so you guys can see it. You're actually gonna have two brackets right here that you can use for the SSD, uh, but you can also use these three and a half inch bays right down here. Actually, you can't really see that, but they slide out and they do have mounting brackets here that you can use. So you can mount a three and a half inch drive or a two and a half inch drive on this. Uh, I'm actually going to use this. I don't really like it mounted on the back right here because I'm going to have wires running across here and her back panel doesn't bubble out. It's more flat. So I need as much room as possible. So we're going to actually mount her SSD on this. You can never afford something like that. I always thought the same, Mark. Uh, I mean, if, if you want to have a gaming PC, just work hard. Uh, try to save money. And uh, one thing I recommend is to, to get a good core system. You know, don't skimp on it. Uh, get get the core components that you actually want. If it means that you need to save for another month or two to get it, save that money and get the good ones. I do wish you give Coffee Girl and Sorty the room. <laughs> Wait, what happened? Every time you get close to that mic ASMR, how was it? Oh gosh. I told you guys that people have met their significant others in video games and on channels like this, so. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say that it that it couldn't happen, okay? I'm going to just let things happen naturally in the chat, you know? Now, when it gets to a certain level, that's where there's the Discord and people can DM each other, you know? But this is the 860 Evo. Really nothing to solid states. Just a little board in there. Now, we're going to go ahead and mount that bad boy to this. And you'll see here, there are four mounting holes on that bracket and they'll actually mount through the bottom of the SSD. If this were a three and a half inch mechanical drive, which by the way, don't get mechanical drives anymore to put like your, your programs on your windows and your games and stuff, because it's gonna be slow as molasses. Solid states are the standard now. They're not expensive. Storage prices have been dropping every day. So it's not too bad. There is lots of mounting. You're right. Yo, how are you? We're gonna go ahead and M.2 for max performance. You are right, Brian. You're gonna get faster read and write speeds with an M.2. But for this particular application for what my wife needs, uh, M.2 just wasn't necessary. Uh, but you are right. You will get maximum performance out of an M.2. 
All right, let's get this bad boy mounted up, get some screws. <laughs> never did I think, never in a million years did I think I'd be doing a PC building stream and people would be like, this is kind of hot, you know? Never, never, never. Leave it to you guys. Probably need a good 1500 bucks for a PC that plays everything at good frame rates. You could say that, Tom. You could get away with a thousand if you're smart, if you can get things on sale, and if you're building it yourself. Nobody here is still using a mechanical hard drive. Are you? Nobody here is still using a mechanical hard drive for their for their their games and programs and their windows and stuff, right? No way. Surely not. Give me a script and I'll do the commentary. It would be pretty funny because you would have the accent. You're right, Sorty. Only for storage. Oh yeah, I mean people definitely still use them for storage. At some point, uh, most people are going to transition over just due to the low cost of storage just in general. You know, it used to be pretty rough. Got to dig through all my screws here. Okay, they're not giving me any extra? What the heck, man? PC has both, all right. This rig for yourself or for someone else? This is for my wife, Caleb. Mine's a little beefier than this, but again, this, this suits her needs and it's a huge upgrade. She's currently rocking a third gen i5 and a two gig 750 Ti and 16 gigs of RAM. So this is a, a pretty big bump up for her. Man, I can't believe they didn't give me any more screws. Hold on. Maybe I'm looking past them. I know you guys can't you guys can't see what I'm reaching for over here. It's my secret stash. Okay? That's that, that's why you can't see. Secret stash of screws over here. Nope. 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 Are you kidding me? All right, well. Can't screw around anymore. <laughs> I've got some screws stashed away if it comes down to it. If I have to break out the, the secret, secret stash. PC build on hold, ran out of screws, yep. No, that's too big. All right, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. And if you'll notice as well, this case, as most, do not have um, a bay for a CD or DVD drive because everything's digital now. So you, you don't need it. Uh, you could always go external if you really, really needed to use a CD or DVD. They're like uh, 20 or 30 bucks. All right. I'm not gonna lie though, I'm pretty upset that, uh, that there are not some more screws in there for that. Unless I've misplaced them. Hmm. All right, all right, fair enough. So I think at this point, we're gonna go ahead and tackle the water cooler. This is gonna be the fun part, guys. This is gonna be the real fun part. Anybody who's mounted coolers on their own, it can be quite entertaining at times. Uh, so hopefully you can see what's going on here. And if they've got pre-applied thermal paste on this, I'm probably gonna remove it 
and apply some of the Arctic thermal paste. I'm a big fan of that. Don't really care for the stock stuff that they apply on these. Yeah, this is an all-in-one water cooler. Real simple overall. Uh, you don't have to put any liquid in it or anything like that. But they can be a pain in the booty to install because they're typically universal. So, for instance, this water cooler can be used on multiple sockets. So, that means that there's going to be different brackets in here. And you're going to have to find the right one for your system. So, this is the Kraken X62. It, listen, it comes with software. And you can change the color of the little thing that spins. Like, all kinds of crazy stuff. 2020 is wild. All right. What's a liquid cooler if you don't put liquid in it? Used to, people, for the longest time, you would have custom tubes and things you would put together, and you would actually put the liquid in it. The liquid is already in this, ready to go. Go buy yourself some screws grinning face with big eyes. <laughs> thank you, Agak. Oh, thank you for the five. I'll put you up there tying VK with the top dono. I guess I'm going to need to, you know. Or maybe when I'm off camera, I'll put double-sided sticky tape on it and mount it in there. <clears throat> not really, not really. Please don't do that. Don't say that I said to do that, all right? Are you kidding me? They don't even mount. They don't mount the fans on it. I got to mount the fans myself. Are you kidding me? They're going to make me work for it. All right, fine. Don't even come with the fans mounted on it. Probably to reduce packaging. That's fine. Or maybe depending on the way you want to set it up, you know, with your specific computer. More mounting. You're right, more mounting. Uh, see, lots of brackets. Lots of brackets. We're going to have to figure out which one we need for this socket. Get that radiator out of there. Getting more M rated every second. This video is not going to get demonetized, all right? It ain't happening. I've not said the J word yet. And YouTube does not like that word. So you can see liquid cooler, pretty awesome. Uh, you have a radiator kind of like how you would have in your car. You can see there. We're going to mount the fans on here and allow the air to pass over this radiator, which will then cool the liquid inside that runs to this block. And that block will sit against the CPU right here. A pretty cool setup, though. All right. Now, we need to make sure this is going to fit because this is a 280 millimeter radiator uh, instead of a 240. And I'm hoping because this is a mid case and there's some wires up here and it's kind of tied up top right up here. I don't have a whole lot of room. Don't mount the radiator. It, it's too late. It's happening. It's happening. But uh, let me get you up there. Let me uh, let me get you up there. Um, Akak. Yes, Akak. How you doing, by the way, Akak? How's your day been today since last night? Why don't I just bring my keyboard closer? You know, that makes more sense. Unless you guys just really want to get up close and personal like this. Ak Ak. Wait, it was Ak Ak and VK. What am I doing? VK Camara? You know what would be really cool? If I could play music right now. But YouTube won't let me. So. You mounting the fans as push or pull config. We're going to decide right now, my chemical crash. We're gonna decide in the heat of the moment. What I'm thinking I'm gonna do with her build is she's got the the three fans mounted in the front right here. And uh, these are intaking. This can vary from person to person on their needs. Uh, we have a Siberian Husky, so there's a lot of pet hair and stuff in the air. I'm thinking that I'm gonna have it intake through the front and I'm actually going to have it blow out and exhaust through the top and exhaust out the back. So everything coming in the front 
and then exhausting up through the top. Now I know that that could potentially, see there's an argument in the PC building world about pulling cool air over the radiator or pulling it's pulling potentially warm air from the case over it and not cooling the CPU as well. But depending on how you go, you're either throwing more hot air in the case over the other components or you're pulling hot air out and running warmer air over the radiator. So you you can argue both ways. It, it really just varies depending on the, the setup from each computer. Uh, thank you for the $2, my chemical crash. But it really does, it just varies. Uh, so we're gonna kind of test and see, hopefully, and see if this is gonna fit because real talk for a second, hopefully I don't have to end this stream and get a different cooler. Uh, so let's see. It's kind of hard for you guys to see it, but there's some wires. You know what? Let's bring you down. Let's bring you down. Let's make this real crazy. There's some wires right here. And if you notice, they're kind of pushing up against this. And I'm worried that this 280, this case is supposed to fit up to a 280 millimeter cooler. And I'm kind of scared right now because whoo, it just, it's not looking like it. It's not looking like it. So let's see. Run the garden hose in my office and spray it. <laughs> oh. Let's see what she looks like. You know what? We're actually gonna have to remove, so you just never know. We're gonna have to remove the RAM temporarily while we do this. You didn't check the specs ahead of time on the cooler? Yes, I did. And everything checks out. However, just because it says it does, unfortunately doesn't mean it does. And it can depend on the board as well. Uh, this also has some big heat sinks on this board. Now, worst case, this radiator could be mounted in the front if, if it does come down to it. That is an option, but uh, she's gonna be upset about moving the RGB fans, you know? What I could do is maybe put two of the RGB fans on the top and then use one for the exhaust and then mount the radiator on the front and have it pull the cooler air because there is a filter on the front. Uh, let's see if maybe this way fits any better. Those heat sinks are huge on this board, huge. Okay, you want to be careful to not beat and bang up your board too much either. Sometimes you, you got to finesse it, got to finagle it. It's probably a better word. You got to finagle it. Listen, I don't think it's fitting in the top. I don't think it's fitting in the top. I really don't. Let's see. But yeah, this case is listed to fit a 240 or 280 radiator in the top of the case. Don't think it's happening. Don't think it's happening. Uh, I'm not gonna go with the external mount. Uh, you can, you can go that route, uh, but it'd be fairly difficult in this case. Uh, let's make sure that it would fit in the front gonna have a mad wife <laughs> she's gonna be mad okay well boy that really even fills up this mid case mounted in the front listen to you while I'm about to head to Paragon City all right bat specter I like it would it fit if you put it in before the board? Oh, I don't think so. I don't know that there's enough clearance up at the top. That's what really kind of scares me. Um, the tubes are gonna have to come from the right hand side. Boy, I don't know. You know what? I almost think I almost think we will remove the board for a moment and see if it will fit and check. 
But boy, that's pushing it. That thickness right there, right up here, I don't know if that gap is is large enough. I really don't. Uh, let's find out. If you tried hitting it with a hammer. Um, that actually can be the solution from time to time. Um, it's worked for me in the past, so I'm not going to count it out. You know? Radiator before the board. Yeah, we're going to try that route. I'm used to working in full towers, and I'm used to primarily doing air coolers. So, I got to think outside the box a little bit here. Unrivet the case. <laughs> ah, we'll figure something out here. Give it a bit of encouragement, says Sorty. It might come down to that, though. Yeah. That's why you use a cube. You have a cube case. All right. Lawson. Thank you for thank you for the twenty dollars, my friend. This looks tedious. Have a couple drinks on me when y'all get done. Mitch is gonna get me the Marvel One Up Arcade for <sighs> Valentine's Day. I'm sure Miss PG will be elated once you get her all set up. Thank you, Lawson. That's awesome. Mitch is getting you the Marvel One Up Arcade. Oh, that is so cool, Lawson. You gotta take a picture of it if you don't mind and tag me on Discord uh, when you get it all set up. Can you do that for me? Thank you for the 20, my friend. I'll get you up there for top donation. It, it can look tedious to put a PC together, but it's very rewarding to know that you put it together. And you plug it up and then hopefully, you know, as we discussed, hopefully it turns on once you do that. And it can be very rewarding because then you can say, I built that. You know, nobody else did. I put that together. I'm gaming on a computer that I built, you know. I'll get you up there, Lawson, for top dono. Let me grab this uh, motherboard case. We'll sit it on top here. Now, we might have to consult with Miss PG about mounting this in the, the front. Let me tell you, because I don't know how she's going to feel about that. I set it on here just as a precaution. You guys think she's gonna be opposed to mounting it in the front? Open air is the future. A lot of people were fans of the, yeah, the open air cases, especially the wall mount ones. I don't know. I'm not really big on them. Not yet, anyways. Yep, it can. It can, my chemical crash. I'm going to see, though, as you guys suggested, to see if we go radiator first. Let me get Lawson up there for top dono. Here's the moment of truth, guys. If this 280 radiator will fit with the board out. Oh, boy. Because here's the deal. If it doesn't fit, okay, if it doesn't fit, um, I'm gonna call her in here and I'm gonna explain it to her live that it's that it's not gonna fit. Okay, so let's see. Moment of truth. Nope, no way this fits a 280 on top. Nope. Ain't happening. Nope. It's advertised as fitting 240 or 280, and it is, it's, it's not happening. Not happening. You can see where it kind of bows out right here. It hits the wires. Hits the wires. And it might fit other 280 coolers. It might. I've seen that in the past but it's not gonna fit the Kraken X62. Totally not going to, nope. Put the LED fans on the radiator. 
That would be a good idea. However, the fans to fit this are 140 and the RGB fans in the front are 120s. So that will not be an option. Um, oh boy. Okay. Um, let me call Miss PG in here. And let's see what decision she, she wants to make. Can you mod the case to fit it? Man, I really hate modding cases though. Uh, when putting it in the front would be a solution. Uh, there is potential to bring more dust into the environment, like BK said, and we do have a Siberian Husky, which is why I wanted to vent it out of the top. Uh, it does have a dust filter in the front. It'll have to be checked periodically which is good to do anyways, but it would have to be done a little more often with this one uh, if I do go that route. See, should have got the Noctua, right? The Noctua, we wouldn't be having this problem. Okay, anyways, let me, let me call Miss PG in here. Hold on. That's true, you could always switch it out. You're right, Peter, it would, it would get her up and rolling. Uh, let me go grab her real quick. Let's see what she says. Hold on, I'll be right back. All right, so Miss PG is looking from afar, and I'm going to show her the dilemma, and let's see what she thinks. Uh, you can see the radiator. No way it's fitting up here. It, is, it ain't happening. Uh, I could take and mount it up here, so we could mount it. I beat it on everything. Like this, in the front. But... We're gonna have to put those 140 fans in front of it, these. Which means you're not gonna have those RGB fans in the front. You're not even gonna see the fans at all. They're just gonna be black. That also means it's in taking the air in. It does have a dust filter, but you, we would have to keep an eye on it because we have a Siberian Husky, so pet hair dust it's going to be pulling air in instead of pushing it out the top like we were thinking about doing now that means i could use these other rgb fans so it doesn't eliminate them i can put two of them up top and one in the rear for exhaust but it's going to be rgb up here and then rgb back here so not really a showpiece can you put the fans up top yes nice potatoes we can move the rgb fans to the top and we can move an RGB fan to the rear because there's actually three 120s in the front right here. How would that work? Functionally, it's gonna be fine. I mean, that is still, that's pulling cold air from the outside, well, running it over the radiator. Is, I mean, you guys can- still see the light, though, wouldn't you? Like it will shine down in it. You guys can see there's three, well, you can kind of see. There's three RGB fans in the front here. Yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll see some of the light in it, but you're not going to have that cool effect of looking at the front of the computer and seeing the RGB rings in the front. Ooh, I wouldn't see anyway. Now, someone else did mention that we can eventually change that. We could get you RGB fans that are this size, and, put them up and you would have RGB fans in the front, RGB fans in the top, and RGB well, fans in the rear. That's fine, because we were eventually going to get more fans. So you want to just go front mount for now, yeah. intake, and then we'll go out on top and rear with RGBs. That works too. 
Do that. Yeah. All right, guys, we're switching it up. Uh, we're starting the build over. All right. So I hope I told you guys to buckle up. I already had to pull the board out. We had it mounted in and realized it wasn't going to fit. Look how big these heat. Look how big. Hold up. Look how big these heat sinks are. Look on this board. I mean, I love it. But that's another thing. If if we're mounting a radiator on the top, look at the clearance here. How much this pushes out right here. So it, it doesn't want to clear. And RGB strips. We can RGB strip it out. We can, yeah. That's, you know, whatever works. It's more or less, it's just funny. I know you guys that have built PCs before. Sometimes it can be a pain because you have to partially, partially disassemble what you purchased. So, for instance, you know, this comes with the 3120s already in the front. We're basically just going to disassemble those and <laughs> reroute the wires and move them. But it's part of building can a PC sometimes. Oh, yeah. I mean, we'll pull the front off and then we'll pull those screws out. But that shows you too, just the it'll fit online. I promise um, you guys, it says it fits a 280 radiator in the top of this we case. We looked at all of it. And it would, except the wires for the front panel are blocking the front half of the top of the case. And also the heat sinks on the board are raised too high to fit on the left side. So the top just isn't happening with the 280. Yep. You're right, Sorty. All right. That's what we'll do, Miss PG. Sorry. No, it's all right. It's part of building computers. Which cable is the Yes, these. They cannot be rerouted because they are they go to the front panel. I'll make it work. Yep. Well, you'll make it work. I'll make it work. <laughs> It's going okay, Felios. We've we've run into a snag with the water cooler. Miss PG sounds like a reasonable wife. <laughs> she wants a, a nice PC that works, that functions. I mean, with a, a little bit of flashiness to it, you know. And understandable. And that's something for those of you that have built PCs, it just it happens sometimes. It's it's not gonna go flawless all the time. Uh, things are not always gonna be as advertised. It's it just happens. You'd be lucky if it went flawless. You would be very, very lucky if it went flawless. Honestly, it kind of scares me if it does because it makes me think that something's wrong. It really does. So we're going to use some little clips here. You can see this front panel. It's kind of like a, an aluminum, but it just pops right off. Yeah, that was one thing we were wondering anyway, what the design on that. You know, the colors weren't showing up so clearly 100% anyway. Yep. Yeah. You can see there is a dust filter right here. We'll pull that bad boy off. All right. Okay. And then we're going to go through and remove these. Thank you. You're welcome. Doggo reveal. Can you send her in here? Just ignore her. I've been throwing all of the boxes and stuff in the floor. So I'll put her on camera. Just lock her in. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we'll start taking these fans out, guys. I have to coax her over here with treats. She needs to go but then I'll bring her in here. Great. Okay. So she'll willingly come in. Here. She's going to pee and or poop outside, and then she'll be back, okay? We keep it real on this stream. That's, that's, that's what's happening, okay? So we're going to have to take all of the screws out for these fans, and we're going to reroute the wires, and we're going to move them throughout the case. Building a custom doggo lie. It's also real handy if you have a little bowl or something for all your screws. So that way they're not scattered everywhere. It can be a pain in the booty. When everything goes perfect, putting PCs together, uh, it just rarely happens. Yeah, it does. You, you can plan it out. You can, you can check every measurement, you know, do all your research and still something not work. You can also get uh, parts that are dead on arrival, you know? And you have no control over that at all. Now these fans do have a fan controller. Uh, the case actually came with the fan controller that you see on the back right here where they're all plugged in. 
Never thought of using a bowl. Yeah. And uh, it's very helpful. All right. So let's trace these back. This one's going right here. Now you still have to have these on these RGB ones. This plug here is going to allow you to use the software and go through the controller and change up the RGBs and whatnot. And you're still going to have your standard three pin header. I know you probably can't make it out on that, but that have to be plugged in. Just toss it to me. All right, come here, doggo. All right, you can close the door for a second. I'll show you guys the doggo. Come here, doggo. Ignore the mess. All right, ignore the mess. This is, we're live right now. Doggo? Doggo, I need you to sit forever. Come here, doggo. Her name is Keita, by the way, not doggo. Come here, come here. Sit. Go in the corner so everyone can see you. Here we go. All right, will you sneeze for everybody? Thank you. There you go. Those are banana split treats, by the way. And she will sneeze on command. That is one of her best tricks. Thank you, doggo. You may go do doggo things. Whatever that may be. Yeah, listen, having a Siberian Husky is a lot of work. Let me tell you, a lot of work. Uh, it's, it's fur everywhere 24-7. I'm pretty sure if you were to split me open right now, uh, I would be lined in fur. I'm surprised that I'm ever cold because I have a fur lining on the inside of my entire body. Oh, thank you for saying bless you to her, Michael. That's very kind of you. You should let the dog go do raid night. No, when they're blowing their coat, uh, you can you can brush her and there will be a pile of fur the size of her entire body sitting beside her. No joke. No, we listen, I like to go for that wolf look. Lawson, if you notice, she doesn't even have a collar on. She's a free dog. All right. People see her all the time and they're like, is that a, is that a wolf? And I'm like, no, listen, she wouldn't be that fat if she was a wolf. They don't get to eat that often, you know? But thank you guys for, for sharing this moment with me. You know, it's, it's kind of fun because we get to sit and chit chat while working on this and it helps it go by quicker. You got a German Shepherd. What kind of doggos do you guys have? If you have one. Or what kind of cat? Maybe you know the breed of your cat, you know? I don't know. You might. Your doggo doesn't wear a collar. Yeah, she she doesn't really need to have one. She stays inside all the time, so there's not really a, a need for a collar. You've never had a dog, Felios? Are you allergic? Or you've just actually never had one? You just have a husband? <laughs> no plans for a doggo? My chemical crash? You force costumes on your cat. Oh man, we used to dress up the, the cat at the shop in a devil costume for Halloween and uh, the customers loved it, let me tell you. They were like, you cute little devil, you. Nah, he hated it. He, he despised it, you know? All right, so let's just see. Let's take a look at this cooler with everything out. You guys can see on the small camera right here. Let's take a look and see what this looks like. Of course, this is pre-fans. Let's make sure that it is actually even gonna fit up front because I'm kind of nervous now. So it does fit up front, yep. It will fit up there, okay. So the hardware we need is gonna be slightly different and then we'll run that right over. All right, we're not gonna put the fans back in until we get this radiator mounted. Let's get this bad boy in here and then we'll transition over to the, the case fans. She still gets her RGB goodness in there. Uh, let's go ahead and grab those 140s. But thank you guys. I think I touched on it and I don't think I finished. Thank you guys for hanging out and uh, making this go by quickly. It's fun to, to do these things. With, with 60 people roughly. We're hanging out and building a computer together. Like how cool is that? You know? 
You had a toy poodle. Two toy poodles. Are those the ones that have hair instead of fur? Lavinia, aren't they the ones that are like hypoallergenic or, or something like that? Or am I thinking of a different kind of dog? Might be a different kind of dog. Okay, so what we're gonna need here, let's see how this one is set up. We're gonna need, now you wanna make sure your orientation is right here because we want the fans pulling the air in and you can tell this by, I'm wondering if I can show this on here. Um, you can tell this by the curvature of the fan blades. Uh, so for instance, you see that the, the curve here is on the inside this way, which means the airflow is going this way. You can tell that I'll spin it around. That means now the air would be coming towards you. This way the air would be going away. Or you could just flick it and feel the the air coming out. What did you do, blow your tax return on new computer parts? No, Brig. I actually have to pay in taxes, unfortunately. So, uh, nope, I did not. Uh, now we're gonna use a washer on this to hold it in, but this is just testing. That will reach to the radiator. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use the longer screws. We'll run them through these 140 millimeter fans. They'll run all the way through and attach to the radiator, which will then hold it in place. I think you had fur. What kind of dog am I thinking of, guys, that has hair and not fur? I, I, there is a dog that exists that has hair. The side of the bracket is on indicates the direction of the airflow. Yeah, some of them will have little arrow indicators. These do not for some reason. But you are correct. A lot of them will have a little arrow on there. But if that's maybe rubbed off or in the case with these NZXT fans that doesn't have it, that's a good way to kind of just look at it and tell. You're going to be real mad at yourself at that too if you mount them the wrong way and then you don't realize until after you've completed the build, you know. We need lots of washers. Let's get these bad boys out of here. But I would say typical time to fully build a PC given that you don't run into any major issues. I mean, you could build a PC in like an hour, an hour and a half. Now, I'm trying to conversate with you guys, so I'm going to be distracted on and off. So it's going to take me much longer. <laughs> but overall, it's, it's really a, a fairly simple process. Again, you're going to run into a couple of snags and whatnot. But um, the actual process itself is not very difficult. Oh, you're welcome, cool dude. If you guys have any questions about building computers, uh, pairing components together and whatnot, uh, you can always ask in the Discord. We have a general section over there. As I said, I wouldn't say that I'm perfect, uh, but this is what I've done for the last seven years, is build custom gaming PCs for some pretty darn high-end clients uh, in the past. It's a little different when you when you do your own, or you build one for a family member, or something like that. You know, you take uh, even more time with it. It's someone personal that you know. Okay, so let's see, we've got four, we need one more washer and we're ready to mount the radiator in here. And it seems poodles do have hair, not fur. I thought, I thought I heard that. So you can't tell a difference though? You're not like, wow, my dog has hair, not fur. <laughs> you have to do all of her computer stuff? Oh, you have her do all of your computer stuff. Fair enough, Brig. Fair enough. All right, so we're gonna make sure they're oriented correctly. Uh, we're also gonna try to make it where we can pass these wires through in a, a convenient spot. For now, I'm gonna slide them through the back. We can always get extenders if we need to for the fans. We'll have that actually go from the bottom. That's what we'll do. We'll do it right like that, right like so. Let's go ahead and get the other fan down here. Me personally, I feel like you would think it would be the other way. You would think that fan coolers are more difficult to mount, but I feel like water coolers are. Because you have to mess with the multiple fans, you've got to mess with the radiator, you've got to mess with the mounting bracket for the block. And I don't know. They're, they're not my favorite thing to work on or to install. 
But Rick, you bring up a good point. You know, uh, it it can be a good time to buy some PC parts. You know, after you get your tax return. <laughs> All right. So this is the fun part. Now what you need to do is balance everything here. Can you guys see my hand right here? Yeah, you can see it. You need to balance everything while also holding the radiator up, all right, while also running at least one screw through to hold it. Sounds pretty awesome. So we're going to move, scooch everything over. Try to line up this radiator as close as we can. We'll bring those down just a tad. That radiator is a tight fit, though, let me tell you. Just had a radiator and a big fan on top CPU and done. Yeah, some are easier than others. Again, I've, I've never mounted a Kraken X62 before, so here we'll kind of hold it. We'll see if we can get at least one screw in here. Even if everything's not perfect. That's fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. We just need to get that one screw in here to kind of hold things in place. Don't panic, Michael. <laughs> Famous last words, right? There we go. See, now that it's in place, one screw, we can slide these other fans up and get everything exactly where we need it. I really hate it though that we can't work that out for the RGB fans right now to be in the front for Miss PG because that was kind of one of her big deciding factors on this case. So I do feel kind of bad because I told her that it would work and the measurements checked out and we just can't make it happen. You think you did your liquid cooler wrong? How so? All right, now we'll just get these screws in here. Hey, it's gonna go quick after that though, guys. It's going to go real quick after that. I'd say the most time-consuming thing is going to be mounting the fans. Let's go ahead and take a vote here. 64 people in here. How many of you think this project actually gets finished on stream tonight? You guys know I ask you these hard questions all the time, and I want you to be truthful with me. You know? I already know without looking at the chat that Sorty's going to say no, and that's okay. It's okay if he doesn't believe. <laughs> Watch, this is the one time he said yes before I've looked. Sorty's like, absolutely. I believe in PG so much, it's unreal. His PC building skills, I mean, come on, he's done it for seven years. He's an absolute computer genius. What did he say? Nope, he said no. He said no. You put your fans on the bottom. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a scenario where a liquid cooler on the bottom of your case would actually work. Hmm. I don't think on the bottom it would really work no matter what. Because even if you're sending that air out, it doesn't really have as much room to escape. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess there may be some kind of case. Temperon says easy. Okay. All right. So well, there we go. I'll spin it around so you guys can see what it looks like in the case. There we go. So that's going to have our two front fans intaking here. They're going to come across the radiator and then we're going to exhaust out the top here and we're going to exhaust out of the rear. So now we do have an exhaust fan, you know, personal refrigerator computer. One of refrigerator computers. Now, something we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mount those fans in the top because I'm not going to run into a situation here where we go to mount the board and then we cannot get the fan in there. So let's see if we can get these fans mounted up. Love me some good airflow, right? All right, luckily this case has lots of exit points to send things through to the back of the case. So let's see the best way we can line these fans up. We're going to go ahead and remove that other dust filter from the top. Some of these I may have to stand up actually. Let's see. You guys can tell I've done this a million times, right? Live streaming it. 
is what I mean. You can tell I've live streamed 100 PC builds, right? Okay. So let's actually look at it from this point of view. You guys will be able to see it on the main monitor here. Okay. Man, I hate, I kind of hate the way this case forces you to push the fans forward or back. So hopefully, maybe you guys can see right here in this top corner here. Um, it kind of forces you to put them towards the outer edge because of the layout, which is fine. That's fine. What we're going to have to do. You could do that, Sorty. I'll allow it. I will 100% allow that. So let's go ahead and put this one and push it as far as we can. So let's get a couple of screws for it. Jordy has my full verbal consent to repost my content with his commentary. So that's fine. You know what? There's the solid state screws. See, this all happened for a reason. It all happened for a reason because we just found that. All right, let's get these bad boys mounted. What's the temp where you're at, PG? About 65 degrees. It's actually been fairly warm. Actually been fairly warm here. You can see, well, maybe you can't. This does actually have indicators, airflow indicators on it. We've had kind of a warm spell, which is weird, but it's pouring down rain outside. Like when they dub anime, right? Sorty's like all screaming at parts. Who did you install the fan? And he makes it like all extreme. That'd be pretty funny. All right, do it. Do it, Sorty. Ooh, a tornado watch, jeez. That's no fun. Another tip you can kind of do is on the first screw on fans like this, I know it's a little hard for you guys to see it. If you don't screw that first one all the way in, you can go through and kind of adjust the fan where you, you need to. Gauntlet has been thrown. But I wish I could play music for you guys. So it's not, you know, you just waiting for me to talk. But uh, YouTube would spank me. They already have multiple times. So not a whole lot I can do again. All right, let's get fan numero dos in the top. Maybe this will turn out looking even better this way. You know, it could, it could. Maybe the RGBs will just kind of light up the whole case. It's crazy though that even in a mid tower like this, it can still be a pretty tight fit for things. I push for a lot of people to get a full tower, but it just doesn't make sense in, in her scenario. Yep, for in game music, right, Brig? Isn't it crazy? Yeah, you could always put more lights, you're right. She really wants, look, she's been lagging since the 8.3 patch in World of Warcraft. So she's, itch, she's itching to get this PC up and rolling. Otherwise, we might have just went and got a smaller cooler. Scoops this fan over just a tad. I like them touching, you know, makes it look a little more uniform. Once we get the fans in, I'm telling you guys, we're, we're in flipping business. We had a baby blizzard today. Where do you live again? Coffee girl. So what was that I hear about the new AT and COH? Yeah, we don't have to talk just computers. You guys can talk about anything. Yeah, the primalist archetype, a shape-shifting archetype, BK. You have your human form, your wolf form, and your panther form. And your powers are the same, but their effects change based on based on your form that you're in. 
And uh, we'll be showcasing that real soon. All right, let's swap it around and let's get this rear fan installed. I'll turn it that way. That way you guys can see it. So again, we're going to exhaust that one out also. Let's see. We're going to take these wires up and over where the I.O. plate is going to be. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty cool to try out. VK, you miss all the snow we had in Colorado. You know what's crazy? I don't think it's going to snow a single time in Tennessee this year. And you know, that's kind of sad. Like, we don't even get a baby snow? Who said baby snow? Said Coffee Girl said baby blizzard. We're not even going to get a single snow. Like, really. Like, that's not fair. That we I hate cold weather. But we can't even get one snow? Not one? There you go. That's actually a better view for you guys. All right, let's figure out how high up we want it. We'll go way up here to try to avoid the I.O. Shield. Um, not yet, Switch. Not on Homecoming yet, anyways. But maybe. Homecoming might implement it at some point. They might. We are neighbors, PG. Wait, where are you from again? Missouri, that's right. Missouri. We would get snow in March of all times. I live in East Tennessee. And what happens is when snowstorms come through, they form like a horseshoe around where I live. And it doesn't snow here. I live in the, uh, screw down. Hope it doesn't fall into the black hole in the floor. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I live in the valley. I live in the valley. So it never snows here. Never snows. Okay, so we are much closer to being in business here. You know what I'm going to do, darn it? You know what I'm going to do? Actually, first off, I'm going to put this filter and this other stuff back on the front. It's pretty cool. All of this is magnetic. So if you'll notice, if you look on this uh, camera in the top corner here, I can take this and just touch it on there. And it's magnetic. It just holds itself. It's pretty awesome. Let's get this back on there. This guy just kind of pops into place. There we go. So front is back on, radiator installed. I take a little bit of snow, Filios, at least once. My doggo would love it. Yeah, she would love some snow. Absolutely. So now what we're gonna do is mount the solid state to that three and a half inch sled that we have. Lots of snow today in Missouri. Also, Travis, okay. All I want to do is take the Jeep out in the snow. I'm a Jeeper. And I want to take it out and, and go off-roading. All right, so we're going to make sure that's oriented the right way. And as I said, there are screw mounts on the bottom right here for the SSD. We're moving along now, guys. That added an extra half hour to this stream by having to move that radiator. It did. By Texas to deliver my board game. Wait, what, Brig? Elaborate. You have to fly to Texas, Oklahoma, and Ohio to deliver your board game. I need some details on this. Come on now, get in there. Still uh, commentate your content. <laughs> you do, Sorty. Like all joking aside, I don't, I don't, I don't care at all. I really don't. I'm sure, Austin. I, I've seen some some people drive Jeeps that think they can go in anything. Oh, uh, that's definitely not me. I'm a, I'm a very cautious driver. But I do like to pop it in four-wheel drive. Um, there's a hill that everyone tries to climb where I live at the local mall. And uh, every time it snows, when it used to, it doesn't anymore, everybody would try to climb it. Try to work your way to the top. 
I made a tabletop game, did a Kickstarter that successfully funded, the highest reward tiers, I'm hand delivering game. Oh my gosh. Congrats, Bard. Bard. Brig. That's big, man. Successfully funded Kickstarter. Yeah, I saw the B. I glanced up and saw the B. All right, solid state is almost mounted to the sled. One way out, interesting. Don't have a couple of screws loose. I definitely have some screws loose. These sleds just pop right in. Here it lock into place. Now, let's get, how about we get the motherboard put back in here? Let's do it. And then we're pretty close to plugging some stuff in. All right, let's get the board seated back down in this bad boy. Move that block out of the way. All right, we're gonna pop this up here. We're gonna put the RAM back in. A1 and A2 for this particular board. Always look at your manual for your board just in case because I've seen that they're, they can be very different. All right. Now let's get the board seated back in. Now I wanna make sure that this fan wire goes up above the IO shield. Make sure that all the wires for the fans are through the right exits. A lot of PC building, you guys can verify this for me, they built your own PC, is a lot of pre-planning. You need to think two steps ahead, otherwise you're, you're gonna find yourself in a difficult spot. You need to think about if I mount that there, What's it gonna cause for the wire? What's it gonna cause for this that's mounted over here? Now see, this is gonna be a struggle for a minute because we gotta get this to fit by these tubes. There we go. Really tight fit, really tight fit here. Come on, you can do it. I believe you can fit. I know you can. Well, these fans do make it tight though. They make it real tight. Hopefully we'll be able to get it and that's where we talked about with these boards that every board is different. So again, you see the massive heat sink on this thing up in the top corner right here. These massive heat sinks that really bump it up. And it's just such a tight fit. Trying to push on the case a little bit here. Hoping we can get it to slide into place. Because we're hitting the fan at the moment. Man. Thank you, my friend, whoever that is. Hey, PG, SWTOR tomorrow. Can't wait for you to see my new character. Oh, here's five from me, lol. Hey, thank you, Carol. Thank you for the five. Yeah, I cannot wait. Can't wait for some SOTOR. I'm excited. I'm going to be honest with you guys. At this point, I don't even know what we're hitting. We appear to be clear. We've met some resistance somewhere. 
Oh, maybe, maybe we moved a little bit. You want to know something crazy? We tried to take one step ahead and put this fan in here. And I think we're actually going to have to take the fan out. Sometimes, that listen, this is going to sound crazy, okay? Sometimes you're going to have to think backwards, actually, as a matter of fact. So we put the fans in to make sure, and then we're going to have to take one of them out. What processor? This is the i9-9900K. Oh, my chemical crash actually answered. Thank you, my friend. You can avoid a lot of these issues. I'm just gonna be upfront with you guys. If you buy a, a full tower. You can avoid a lot of the issues with a, a full tower, but it's gonna take up a lot more space. You know, you might not have that room to put the full tower. So take number two, we're gonna move that top fan out of the way and then we'll remount it. Let's try this again. Carefully slide it in. Yep, we're gonna go right into place. Look at that. We just needed to move that fan. So let's go ahead and get these motherboard screws back in. I thought the top all-in-one is harder to install after you put the board in first. It, it varies based on your hardware. We actually had, yeah, that was the brackets, sorry. We actually had the cooler installed in the top, but unfortunately this mid case does not fit it due to the wires from the front panel. So we actually had to then move the radiator to the front and we're going to intake pull the cold air across the radiator there is a filter in the front and then we're going to send all the air out the top and the rear just needed a little coaxing yeah, that's right it's kind of like working on cars you know sometimes you just got to use a little bit of force build the pc covered in a cardboard box play i mean theoretically you could have your uh components for your computer just out and about in the open if you really wanted to. Is that a Cooler Master case? This is a Corsair case. It is the iQ. Think like um, the i products, like iPhone, iPad. So it's a little small i. I think specifically it's an iQ 220T. An iQ 220T, again, a mid case. And we're using a, a full-size ATX motherboard, a 280 millimeter liquid cooler. So we're pushing it for space. It's an eye case, exactly. It makes, it, it makes things cuter. You sell more when you put a little eye in front of it. People just, people flock to it when you do that. They think it's an Apple product. So they just line up launch day. You know, they're camping out to buy your product because you put an eye in front of it. You know what? We're going to wait. We're not going to put that other fan up there yet because we might need to access some of the exits up top right here. So we're going to hold off on the other top fan. We're probably actually going to do it last. So as you can see, let's spin this bad boy around. Most of the major components are installed at this point. Our CPU and RAM, of course, are on the board. We've got our radiator in the front with the two fans. Uh, we've got one fan in the top. We're going to put another one here, and we've got our exhaust fan. So we need to get this block mounted on the CPU. That's super important. Uh, we're basically going to find the connectors we need find some kind of cool way to run these, and then we're gonna mount it right there on the CPU. So it's coming together. 
Right guys? Just coming together. So let's figure out what bracket we need for this computer. Usually what you can do is refer to the manual. Another thing that I stress is even if you've built a million computers, as I said, I've probably built five to 700 total. With things like this, don't feel like you can't refer to the manual. Like, don't think, well, I'm a seasoned PC building veteran, so I don't need to look at instructions. Kind of like us guys do with directions and stuff sometimes. Uh, just double check it. There's nothing wrong. Like I said, I've, I've built hundreds of PCs, but I'm still going to double check and make sure that the socket that I have, that I have the right bracket. Now, this looks intimidating, right? If, if, if you've never built a PC and you looked at this, you're thinking, oh, crap, PG. This stream just went from three hours to 12 hours. There's a lot of information you don't need here. So what we're doing is just looking for the socket that we have. So this is an 1151 socket board. So this is going to show us the bracket that we need because we're going to install a back plate on here. Just seems like the path with more resistance this way. Wait, which part? Which part, Edward? Didn't realize you were learning how to read this evening. Yes, we'll be teaching you the alphabet. All right, so we're not gonna need that one. Not yet. That one. So this is gonna be our, our back plate here. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and mount that. Right, it's gonna show us the orientation here on the directions. So basically for 1151, these little sliders right here, these little guys move, move them forward and back, all need to be on the inside. So we're gonna slide them in. It's like that. You guys probably can't see that at all, can you? Probably not. Now, what we're gonna do is uh, put, we're gonna actually install it on here. Let's see. Outermost, we know that. Let's make sure we get all the other right brackets that we need. Because at that point, we're going to want to install the standoffs. So let's get the right standoffs. How to build a PC with PG. That's what I should have titled it, isn't it? Yep, exactly, Karistoff. Oh, look how nice they are. Look at this. They labeled it. You guys can't see it. There it is, AM4. So we know we don't need those. How thoughtful of them. So this must be the Intel ones. How very thoughtful of them to do that. Actually label it out like that. All right. Runaway screw. How you doing tonight, Zero? So these can be kind of tricky, but it's it's not too bad. What you're gonna want to do is take, I'll give you guys kind of a, well I just whacked the mic, didn't I? This right here is gonna be your back plate that's gonna allow you to mount the block to the CPU. So there's gonna be some little standoffs on it that stick out. You're gonna push them through the board. And it can be kind of a tight fit. And we're going to put some standoffs on that. Yeah, I like them, Karistoff. I like them. All right, now I think some of these guys fell out. All right, so we're going to put the... Let's make sure we orient these correctly. Yes, all right. So we've got a couple of standoffs here. Those are actually going to mount in the case. Spin it around yet again. Here we go. I need a uh, lazy Susan. So I can just spin this thing around and show you guys. I'm going to hold that back plate and screw these bad boys in. And what that'll do is give us something to mount to. And then it's also going to hold the back plate 
in place. What are you doing about the radiator? We ended up going to the front, Nicholas. We went, we went to the front, man. Not, not exactly what we wanted to do, but it's what we had to do. How are you going to build your own PC now, Sorty? How are you supposed to build your own now? Yeah, what we did, Nicholas, is you already did. <laughs> I know, I'm just messing with you. Okay. So that is right. Let's get them in here. Well, it's always kind of freaked me out a little bit with water coolers that I'm not a big fan of is a lot of times when you put these standoffs on these back plates, there is still going to be some wiggle room here. And, oh, I, I, don't, I don't care for that. I know that it'll tighten it up once we actually put the block on, but I, I hate that feeling. Yeah, we ended up moving the RGB fans throughout the case, Nicholas, instead. And then in the future, what we might do is replace those front fans that are pulling air across the radiator in the front, Nicholas, to RGB fans, if, if she really wants it. It wouldn't be that big of a deal to just slide that radiator out and put some more on there, you know. Never had the money to consider liquid cooling. It's come down uh, quite a bit compared to what it used to be. This, this Kraken cooler was about $130, and the Noctua that I was trying to get her to get was like 75 or 80 Maybe I say that. That's like double the price, isn't it? Sounds a lot worse when I said it out loud. But overall, relatively speaking, they're not too bad. Okay, so we've got those standoffs tightened, and as you can see, you can hear it, there's some wiggle room here. Those can actually move around. It's the way it works. Okay, so next up, we're actually gonna flip this on its back again. And we're getting pretty close, guys. Hooking the stuff up is easy peasy. So we've got the standoffs. Now what we're gonna do is get a plate that's gonna go over this. Now what I'm thinking about doing, we're, we're gonna remove this thermal paste. We're going to remove this and put some Arctic Silver on the actual CPU. So let's go ahead and clean this thermal paste off. Uh, I think they exist, Sorty. I think there's such a thing as that. RGB panels for your wall? Yeah. You need to buy a laser printer and do a custom logo for her on the side of the tower. Ooh, I could do that as like a surprise. Couldn't I, Nicholas? Thank you for the five, man. Hopefully she's not watching right now. And uh, th this is just alcohol I'm taking to remove the pre-applied thermal paste that they have on here. I don't know how good this stuff is. I'm sure it's fine for most people, but just kind of personal preference. I like the Arctic Silver. So we're gonna clean that up real good. That's something if you ever change out coolers or uh, uh, upgrade, put a newer processor in there, always make sure you get all of the old thermal paste off when you go to apply some more. Don't just put it over top of what's already there. Definitely not a good idea. I know some of you guys are like, PG, we know, <laughs> we know. <laughs> but thank you for the five, Nicholas. All right, so let's see for AMD, not AMD, excuse me, uh, for the Intel socket, what we've got, because it looks like we've already got a bracket on here. Now we're gonna dry fit. There's no thermal paste on here yet. We're just dry fitting to kind of get an idea. So it looks like the inside. Okay, let's make sure that we don't have to change that bracket out, that it is indeed the one that we need. Because you'll see we've got two more brackets here. So let's just make sure that's the right one. OK. 
Okay. Yep, the Intel retention bracket is pre-installed. The other ones are... Is that one? Okay. So you've got a couple of different options there. Again, they just, they're trying to make it universal. It's kind of the idea. So let's throw those out of the way. Now this is pretty cool though with these coolers. You've got some big massive thumb screws that actually hold this bad boy in place. So let's apply some Arctic Silver. Sounds good, Carol. We'll see you tomorrow. Some of you guys, we are going to make sure that this post when this build is done, by the way. For anyone who's trying to stay, stick it through and make it, I'll let you know when we're about to go through and hook it up, make sure that it posts. Now this can be up for debate a little bit when people talk, to, talk about applying thermal paste for their computer. Now what I do, and you're gonna get it all over yourself by the way, so just a heads up. I put a pea-sized dot, I'll move the camera down here in just a moment, in the center. Because once you apply the pressure from that block, it's going to smush it and spread it out. Used to people thought you had to get like a credit card or something and smooth it out. But then what I'll actually do, it doesn't look that great when you when you sit here and do it, but I'll actually make a square around the border. You don't have to do that, but I'll put a very, very small amount and then just rub the excess off underneath. You don't need is quite as much as you think you do. Again, about a pea sized in the middle. Now this again, it's, it's, it's not about the looks. I'll show you guys what we're talking about here. It's not about the way it looks. Now that going around the edges is very thin, a very small amount. That's a pea sized dot in the middle. And then I just rub the excess off around it. A way you can check if you wanna make sure you have enough or to check to make sure that you don't have too little is uh, once you apply that, you can remove the uh, cooler and make sure that it's spread it out the way that you want. Uh, you want to avoid it oozing over the edges. That's that's a no-no. That is not good. A lot of people think that the, the more you put it, the better it cools it. That's not the case. Okay, so we're going to orient these tubes some kind of cool way for Miss PG. We're actually going to bring it down... Another thing we need to think about here actually is we need to think about the video card that's going in here, guys. We need to think about the video card because that is going to go in the PCI Express slot at the top, which might hit these tubes. No, they won't. We'll be able to raise them up like that if we need to, to keep them out of the way. So we're okay. So this is going to go on the inside. Yeah, absolutely, Sorty. I don't know how I'm going to wake you up, though. Now, when you're tightening these, I know that I know that, that seems silly, but just like with anything, you don't want to go through and tighten one of them all the way and then go add the other ones. You actually want to spread it around. So put the first one on just enough to hold it. Then go around and kind of do a, a crossing pattern. So hit up each corner like this, tightening a little bit each time. That's gonna be the best method for really getting it to apply the way you need it to. You know how, I guess actually that's true, Sorty. All right, when do you want me to wake you up? When we're, when we're finding out if it posts or not? I'm guessing. PC building, you love it or you don't. That's right, you're right. I could just sit and talk about this all day with you guys. We still have 57 people. We, we have dropped some viewers probably because it's getting late. But some people just love talking PC building. So again, I'm just kind of going corner to corner. So you're gonna make several passes before you really tighten it down. You don't wanna over tighten it either. I mean, you wanna snug it up, of course. Don't break it off or anything. You actually do the same method when you're putting tires on a car. All right, nice and tight. Nice and tight when I'm about to break it. Fair, sorty. Sounds good. All right, 
Everything's nice and snug. We've got our water cooler installed. Woo! We did it. All right. Keep all your parts because you never know. You never know. All right. So at this point, I'm still not going to put that fan up here up top yet because we might need to run some of our power supply cables up here. Uh, we're also going to get that nice big juicy. Oh, baby. She's juicy. The 8 gig 2060 Super, that RTX card. That Super gives you those extra CUDA cores. All right. Let's go ahead and start plugging some things up. Let's also check. Okay, good. The wires for the cooler are going to plug in up top. Good deal. Woo! Make sure they are accessible. Because you are going to have to plug in some things for it to tell that pump what to do. All right. I'll see you in a bit, Sorty. We'll be here. We're going to finish it tonight. Miss PG needs to be able to play World of Warcraft. Right. She needs to be able to play it. So we're going to finish it tonight. All right. So let's start plugging some other things in. We'll go ahead and put these cables into the block. And it actually uses a mini USB cable. Not a micro, not any other kind of funky looking cable. It's just a standard mini USB cable. Get that plugged in. All right. And you'll see this actually comes with some fan extenders on it that you can run. All right, but we're going to go ahead and get that plugged in as well. Let's pick it up so we can see down into it. Okay. All right, we'll actually keep that to the side for now. All right, let's start plugging some other things in, guys. We'll start shuffling some cables around. Could use ray tracing in Minecraft. Good call, Cypher. You are correct. Now, this is something that if you've never built a PC can look intimidating, but I'll give you a piece of advice. Most of these wires right here need to be plugged in. Check this out. Looks like an absolute rat nest, right? Just wires everywhere. Just take it one wire at a time. It's no biggie. So we're going to start with the main 24-pin power cable coming from the power supply. That's going to be probably the fattest wire in this stack. Lots of wire noise going through the mic. And we're going to try to run them in a way that's set up for wire management later. We're not going to manage the wires yet, but keep that in mind. So the big 24-pin fattest cable from your power supply. We're going to run that up, plug that bad boy in. I may have to just orient it one way so you guys can see what's going on. I don't know what would be the best point of view. Maybe we'll do it like this. Tried to use two smaller power supplies to power his computer when he upgraded his video card. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Really doesn't sound like a good idea to me. Oh boy. And honestly, for anybody wondering, I know you guys are just, you know, you've been really wanting to ask this question, right? How do I feel about overclocking? Not a fan of it at all. I feel like that if you need, if you feel like you need to overclock your CPU or your RAM or any part of your system, you should have bought a better component. That's just my personal opinion. You did, Risen. And this is, a, however, a very different stream. It's the first time we've ever built a PC live on this channel. Uh, so you caught me at a, a very different time compared to what we normally do. So from there, let's also get your CPU power plugged in. 
That's probably going to be maybe your second fattest cable coming from your power supply. They're typically labeled. You'll see there's also ones that are labeled PCIe. You guys can't see that, but it says PCIe. Those are going to be used for other things like your video card. Check for the one that says CPU on it. There you go. This one says CPU on it. I'm going to try to route it in a, a good way here. There we go. We'll bring it up this way. Right behind everything. What are you up to tonight, Risen? We're building my wife her new gaming computer. Let's run it under everything. There we go. And hopefully you don't have to use any extenders. Hopefully it'll just go the distance. Ooh, nice. Cable management nightmare. It can be a pain. It can be. It's actually one of my favorite things to do is just turn on some music, jam out, and just manage cables. I'm such a, a dork. I can almost bet you that out of the 51 people here, no one is going to agree with that. Everyone's going to say, you like, wait, you, PG, you like to what? You like to manage cables for fun? Did I just hear you right? We're actually going to bring this through in this corner up here. At one point, I had a job basically managing cables for an audiovisual company. Uh, they would send me in and they would say, this is the cable management master. And I would go in and I would manage, I would manage cables, change them up. Whoever had done it before, I would undo what they did and redo it. And that was my job for a while. And that's not a joke. Boy, I hope that fan still fits up there. That's such a tight fit. Such a tight fit. Okay. So we're going to try to separate these a little bit. They look way cooler than old school gaming rigs, right? They do, don't they? So we're going to move some of these um, PCIe cables from the power supply out of the way. Let's go ahead and choose a SATA cable, power cable here, to plug into our solid state. So we're going to have to power that bad boy. So you're going to need a cable to power it and a cable to transfer data to the motherboard. So we're going to go ahead and actually tuck that one a little bit up under the solid state. And what's cool again that I mentioned with this case is we have plenty of room to hide the wires underneath it. Mutters, I love cable management. Is that sarcastic? I'm bad at, at knowing if something's sarcasm or not, but I'm thinking it might be my chemical crash. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's see what else we're gonna need. Um, these fans are gonna need to now be plugged into the fan controller and into the board. So let's go ahead and get these bad boys plugged in. Numero uno. Those are just going to kind of hang there. Here's the one from the rear. I'm going to go ahead and get him plugged in. Numero dos. And we're going to have the cables. Let's see how many fan headers we have on this board. Fingers crossed for a bunch of them. Fingers crossed for a bunch of fan headers. Let's see, let's see. Got a couple, okay, okay. System fan right here at the bottom. I'm looking for, this can take a minute or two. I'm hiding behind it. This can take a minute or two to decide which fan headers you want to utilize. So we're going to go... This top fan is going to come down here, okay. Did someone ask what your first MMO was? 
What was your first MMO or PC game you remember playing? My very, very first MMO was EverQuest. Was EverQuest, actually. Come to think of it. Alright, system fan. Gonna grab one of those headers. Alright, now we're gonna look for another system fan header for the other one. Got plenty along the bottom. Plenty to choose from. Oregon Trail. That's a good one. My first PC game ever, though, was Rise of Nations, the real time strategy. Yeah, what about you guys? All right, another system fan header. All right, so those two fans are plugged in. We'll get that third one plugged in once we go to use it. Let's see, these cables can go to the side for now. We are not gonna need these old Molex style cables for anything. Most stuff has SATA power now. So we're gonna slide that out of the way. Slide that out of the way. There's a lot of stuff that you, you're not even gonna use. A lot of it, you just coil it up and you hide it away. So you'll notice that this, let's get that out of the way real quick actually. Okay. And we're gonna have the front header stuff we need to plug in. Let's run this. And the cool thing is a lot of these cables, if you look on them, I know that you can't see when I'm holding it up here, but uh, they're actually gonna be labeled. So if you look at this cable, It's actually going to say, come on, focus, USB on it. Come on, camera. You get the point. It's actually labeled and says USB on it. So you're going to want to look for one of the USB headers on the board. So they've really, they, they've kind of simplified it. You know, there's even some things that are color coded on here. It makes it real simple. Ultima Online, oh boy, yep. EverQuest, Anarchy Online, Matrix Online. We have a lot of Matrix Online peeps in here. You know, it's a shame I never really got to play that game very much. I got to play it a little, but not much. All right, so let's get this plugged into a USB header. Some of these are a tight fit. And it, it's personal preference a lot of times how people set these up when they're plugging things in. I like to have it standing, but uh, some people lay it down on its side. Just kind of depends. Okay. Now we are gonna have SATA power for this fan controller here. So that fan controller uses USB that plugs into the board and uh, SATA to power it. So we're just gonna pick one of these. One that we're gonna end up stuffing away and kind of hiding after we plug it in. But again, I cannot stress enough. I, I'm telling you guys, do not fully do your wire management. Don't, don't go through and start zip tying stuff because you might need to move stuff around, it might not boot up, it might not power up, period. You don't wanna go that route. Just just hold off on your wire management. Make sure that it boots and it, or that it posts first. It's not gonna boot, so to say, because we're not gonna have windows on it yet. We are gonna shove that little guy out of the way, though. We're getting there, we're getting there, guys. Cable management hype. <laughs> We need an emote for that. It says cable management hype, don't we? That is the one we used, okay. But anyways, I wouldn't want to bore you guys too much with all the cable management, you know? I don't think you guys are really into having a zip tie party. Don't know if you guys are into that kind of thing or not. 
Okay, PCIe. All right, let's get the front panel stuff plugged in. So we've got two USB 3.0s. Uh, you're usually gonna have like an activity indicator on top for your hard drive. Some do, some don't. Uh, so let's get those plugged in. These are gonna be our two fans that are on the front for the radiator. Hey, good deal. You like it, Jeff? Did you order one? Or you mean you just like the one that I have on? Uh, so here's our 3.0 cable. Let's go ahead and route that bad boy down here. Now again, I know you guys can't see everything that I'm plugging in here. It's kind of hard to get every angle, unfortunately. We got the 3.0 plugged in. Yeah, we're rocking the PG merch. It's on the Nemesis plot. <clears throat> Top link in the description if you'd like to purchase one, by the way. <clears throat> Just saying, in case someone's wondering, you know, they might be asking. Okay. Now what confuses a lot of people is all of the cables for the things on the top panel, on the front panel. So you've got a, you're gonna have a cable for your power button, your reset switch, and your hard drive uh, indicator. Again, they're labeled on the cable and they're color coded and labeled on the motherboard. So don't let it overwhelm you. Don't let it freak you out. It's really not that bad, it's not. Honestly, the big thing is just getting them over there. Thank you, Senate Kane. I like it a lot. It's super comfortable. It's the Heather style mocha color, so it's real breathable. Okay. Now, what you have to do a lot of times is it will be labeled. Here, we'll lay it down. I'll show you for the front panel. Let's see if we can find where it's labeled. This one might not be labeled on the board. It usually is, you just have to find it. See if we can find it first. But basically all your front panel stuff, as I mentioned, there's gonna be multiple plugs down here. Good shot of my ceiling, right? Multiple plugs down here. It looks like a lot. And these guys are gonna have to go into them. And a lot of times these are gonna be there's gonna be a diagram on the board. So you actually search around on the board and look for it. If you can't find it, it's definitely in the manual. It'll definitely be there. So let's go through and see if we can find where that might be labeled on the board. It's funny because I have this exact board and I don't remember if I had to refer to the manual or if it was labeled somewhere on it. It's not always near it, that's the thing. It is, it's labeled right below it, okay. So here we go, this one's got a power switch of course, a reset switch and the power LEDs. So let's find that reset switch. Typically the reset switch is going to be flipped. So just keep that in mind. And it's gonna be labeled that way, but the reset switch, the polarity on it is gonna actually be flipped compared to the rest of them. So power switch. So it'll be oriented different than everything else. All right. Then our power LED. And then front panel stuff will be done and working. And a floppy drive and a zip drive. Make sure, you, I'm glad we're not still rocking with that stuff. Floppy drives, oh my gosh. And man, Molex plugs. How, do I have any Molex lovers in here? No. Such a pain to get things to plug in with Molex plugs. You know, you sit there and you twist it and you turn it and you, you crunch it and you, you keep going. It's lined up. I swear it's lined up. And you just keep kind of bending it and turning it and it just won't plug in. It doesn't. Such a pain. <laughs> All right. Next up. Let's see what else we've got. Process of elimination. Like I said, one, one cable at a time. One cable at a time. We're gonna have our two fans that are in front of the radiator. Let's go check on the board. Again, I know you guys can't see this part. We're gonna have CPU and CPU optional. So we're gonna plug those up here. 
And you'll notice these are gonna be, again, I'll show it, I know it's hard to see it. These are four pin fan plugs. Uh, the, that fourth pin allows the board to be able to control the speeds on it. So that's gonna be the difference when you have fans that uh, have three pins and fans that have four pins. If you have a three pin plug and you only have a four pin header, that's okay, you can still plug it in. It'll work just the same. Again, the board just won't be able to control the speed on that. This is why I don't mind spending the extra money to let someone else deal with them. <laughs> yep, this is what I did all day, every day, guys, for seven years. I would finish one and it was on to the next. Looking at that merch now. Yeah, there's some really cool shirts over there, Jeff. I think. I think there's some really cool shirts. Okay. Now, the one thing we'll have to double check, this cooler actually has, it looks like a, a USB header on it. And I'm guessing that's what that is, but we're going to refer to the manual just in case. We, we don't want to assume anything when building this computer. This is high dollar merchandise. So there's no reason to just uh, assume that something is what it is when you don't know for sure. All right, so we're getting close, guys. We are getting close. Let's actually check the manual for that. It plugging in cables and sorting them. <laughs> don't worry. As I said, I won't make you sit through the cable management. Uh, let's double check, give you an idea of how long these really are. Uh, let's check here. Okay. Make sure we get all these cables plugged in properly. Honestly, the, the biggest thing is just finding the right section. You know, I mean, it's, it's so large that you just gotta find the section you're looking for. Okay, so we're gonna go through this guy. Where'd that cable go? <laughs> oh, there it is, it fell, that's why. Okay. Nice, you're welcome, Jeff. I really appreciate it, man. Okay, let's see here. Make sure we've got the right, okay. Connect the mini USB cable from the pump to an available USB 2.0 internal connector. All right, so that is what we're looking for. This is also gonna run off of that. Okay, perfect. So it's exactly what we thought. <laughs> now, we need to figure out a way to run this. It's not a very long cable. Hopefully we can run it and hide it so Miss PG doesn't have to stare at it. I'm gonna try to run it along the heat sink. Now you guys know that I'll have to take a, a finished product picture of this, right? Because you guys are gonna see it when it's a mess and you're gonna be like, wow, PG does not clean up the wires on his computer. All right, we'll plug that into an available USB header on the board. Now, a lot of this pump, a lot of its thing is, it has additional features uh, where it has like the ring, the colored ring that goes around it and whatnot. So that's why it has some extra plugs. But I promise, we're, we're getting close. The fun stuff is when, when you plug it in and you see if it explodes, right? I know that's what everybody's waiting for. Okay. So then we're going to run 
This actually needs to plug into the CPU. Got all them bells and whistles. It takes a little bit longer, you know? It does. It takes a little bit longer to get everything plugged in. And you've got some extra stuff. Let's make sure one more time that we're plugging that into the right spot. All right, that's so what you're waiting for, Kevin. No problem. Don't let me forget the wake sortie up. Don't let me forget. Let's see. Yep, that's all right. We'll connect that to the first one off of the cable for the fans. No problem. Just talking to myself. Re reassuring myself here, you know. But yeah, we are getting really close, just to make sure it's gonna post. I've got an extra monitor in here and power cable. So that way we can find out live together. So you guys can either grats me or uh, I don't know. You can pray for me, depending on what happens. And it blows up. I've had one computer shoot flames. One. And it was about a, a two inch flame. It shot out of it. We're getting close, Coffee Girl. We're going on two hours and 18 minutes. We're getting close. But what happened is there was actually a short in the, the front panel from the factory. And uh, when we powered it up, it shot a flame out, caught on fire. Pretty exciting day, you know? Things were real quiet that day until that happened. We're still mounting and screwing, though. Sure are. I'm going to slide these in here in case Miss PG puts another drive in here. I'm going to keep that in mind for future reference. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy, Senate Kane. All right, again, we're not full cable management, but we're tucking a few things away. Have it out of our way is while we're doing it. Okay, now we need to plug those two fans into this little guy that comes off of the CPU. That allows everything to communicate properly. We're going to plug those guys in. Again, I'm just going to let it kind of free hang here. So it looks like we have the audio cable left for the headphone and microphone jack up top. Then we'll plug in the video card and a SATA cable. And we really don't even have to have the SATA cable. And then I think we're ready to uh, see what happens. Let me see if I can route this audio cable. Usually the audio plug on the board is all the way over on the far side. Makes it kind of a pain. Been in computer since 1992 ish. Nice. Yep. Very bottom corner down here. And if we ever do this again, I'll have a better setup. Just so you guys know, I set all this up 30 minutes before I decided to stream it. So uh, this was not expected. I was not planning on doing this in any way. So that's why it's all kind of crazy. So to say, this this was not planned. Okay. Ish, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see if we can get that uh, that fan to fit up here. Let's see if we can go ahead and do that. Production value has been good. Yeah, I wish I had a couple more angles though for you. That's the only thing. I wish I had a few more angles. But we're, we're working with what we got. You guys are still hanging out. 51 strong. 
just wait. You're sitting on the edge of your seat to see if PG really has built a computer before. I get it. I fully get it. So this fan does fit no problem. Good deal. Even when we're just waiting to see if it posts, we need to uh, see all the RGB goodness. Now I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tech talk again for a moment here for anybody else who's built computers. I'm gonna tell you something that's really frustrating. When you put a board, when you put a, a gaming PC together or any PC, why did I say gaming? Any PC together, you put it all together and you go. To, to power it up and it doesn't post and you find out that the CPU you have is not supported by the board without a BIOS update. So you have to go get a CPU that is currently supported just to get it to post, just to update the BIOS, just to pull that chip back out to put the new chip in that you wanted to put it in the first place. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Now that's frustrating. And I've had that happen a lot, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. But boy, let me tell you. Whew. That'll get me going real quick. All right, we're going to plug this one here. Then we're going to find another system fan header on the board. And then we're almost cooking. A couple people know. You sound like you speak from first-hand experience. Man, those are frustrating times. <laughs> Real frustrating times. All right, so we got a couple more system fan headers along the bottom. Let's, let's uh, cross our fingers and hope that this cable will reach. I think it will. Oh, yeah, we got it. We totally got it. But that's one of those times where I'm like, do I have to? Like, do I have to do it? What if you just keep this old, old CPU? It'll do what you want, won't it? You don't need that new upgraded one. Come on. All right, guys. Let's put this 2060 Super in here. I'm going to stand for this part as well. And hopefully you guys can kind of get a good shot of it right here. Aerial coverage. All right, where are my scissors? I couldn't use the butter knife for this. I wanted to, but this PG was like, no, no butter knife. Another really big question for everybody, do you guys put the badges on your case that comes with your hardware? Does anybody put the badges on on their case oh this is such a beautiful card this is the actual nvidia card by far the the most beautiful design when you're looking at these rtx cards check this out check that out Absolutely beautiful, beautiful card. Color matches on the back here. Sexy card, right? You've got a DVI, two display ports, and an HDMI on there, and a USB-C, USB-C style. Right, we're gonna go ahead and remove this plastic on here. And uh, let's, let's set this to the side for just a moment because we need to uh, remove these to make sure it's going to fit. So we're going to go kind of dry fit here. Going to go in those two. All right. We're getting close, guys. 
Look at that baby. She's sexy. Miss PG's going to come in here and be like, what's going on in here? Who's sexy? I'm going to say you, Miss PG. You. Of course. Who do you think we're talking about? That's a thick boy? Yeah. I don't know how much power it takes, which plugs we're going to need to use. Let's see what we've got here. One eight pin connector. One eight pin connector. They really nailed it with the power consumption for these cards for the RTX series. So this should just slide right into place just perfectly like butter here. You're going to hear a little click. I sound like a doctor or something telling you guys like to not worry. Like you're going to hear a little click. That's normal. That's good. Yeah, once you get it in place, that is. Here we go. Listen for it. Oh, all my PC enthusiasts here. Let's listen together. I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet. Oh. Oh, now doesn't that just hit you? Come on now. Let me hear it. All right, we're going to get it screwed back into place here. Oh, that new hardware snapping into place. Whew. Sights and sounds of new PC building. Now, don't forget to power this bad boy up. Don't forget to do that. You know, you get it plugged in, you get all excited. And you forget to actually give it some power. This bad boy needs to be able to get some juice from the power supply. But check this out, guys. Like I said, we're real close. What do you think so far? Huh? What do you think? I think that's a beautiful PC so far. I think she's party. I think she's party. I'd take her out to Taco Bell. All right, let's get it some power. We needed uh, one of the PCIe cables from our power supply. So that was an eight pin. So you're actually just gonna take these split off so you can use it as six pin or eight pin. Just gonna slide that on there. Let's find a good spot to bring it out though. Let's see. You know what, I got the perfect spot. Can get it to go. Hit auto correct. Wait till she lights up. I just wish those R R G B fans were in the front. I'm. A, you guys have to talk me into uh, to stop talking like that. Thinking about it. Right. It's it's gonna be fine the way it is without the R G B S in the front. It'll be fine. I just know she really wanted it. You know. All right, see if we can get this actually plugged in here. Now you guys can't see this part, but I gotta have it sitting up right. Gotta inspect the back of my eyelids. All right, Nicholas. Hey, I'm glad you hung out though, Nicholas. Hopefully you kind of had fun talking PCs, hanging out for a bit. Come on, work with me. Work with me. All right, that's nice and plugged in. All right, we are very close, very close. Now we're gonna go through and remove this film off of the cooler, nice and shiny. All right. Now, let's kind of get a check. Let's step back for a moment and let's get a check and see where we are. Like I said, never just assume because you've built a ton of PCs that, you know, 
you did it right the first time and you don't need to double or triple check anything, no. Make sure, I'm telling you. Make sure, because you don't want to make a fatal mistake here and forget something super important and fry your machine because sometimes the computers are, are durable but you know things happen and uh, you don't want to fry something just because you were in a hurry so we've got our radiator mounted fans pulling in fans out taking up top because we were forced to due to the size of the cooler and the case our video card is in and powered ram is in Water block is nice and snug. Uh, we do have it plugged into the um, CPU fan header on the board. Uh, this runs some extra little cables so you can control the lights and stuff on it. That's on. It has to run to a USB header on the motherboard. That's in. has to be SATA powered. That's plugged in. Uh, we do have our CPU power plugged in up top up here. Fans appear to be plugged in. Audio header is plugged in from the front panel. All of our other front panel stuff, power button, uh, LED indicator for the hard drive. All the other fans are plugged in. We might be ready to see if this baby posts. What do you guys think? Does it sound like we're missing anything? I'm gonna blame it on I'm gonna blame it on you guys. If we go we go to see if it posts, then we got a problem. <laughs> I used Arctic Silver Wonderbex. I actually scraped off the pre-applied thermal paste on the block and applied arctic silver i don't have a sata cable ran to the hard drive just yet but uh, we're not installing windows or anything yet i literally just want to see if this baby posts right we don't have any issues and she she turns on and comes up i think we're ready to find out though i do okay. let me just double check all my cables here okay one thing I wanted to check on the box. Okay. All right, let's move some stuff out of the way. Let's go ahead and get this filter placed back on top just for looks, even though we've done no cable management. Keep that in mind. We got cables just flopping around out here. Uh, let's let's face it this way. That way you guys can see everything come on for the first time. Plug in your video card. Yeah, we have nothing plugged in yet other than we have the, the power plugged into the video card. So let's break out our cable. Yes, sorty. Sorty, sorty, sorty. Say his name three times and he will appear. Sorty, sorty, sorty. All right. Let's find... This does have an HDMI output, correct? It does have an HDMI output. Get that. Let's get our power cable. Sorty, sorty, sorty. Someone wake him up. Someone wake sorty up. This is the big moment. Everybody's been waiting for. Does PG's PC blow up? Or does it run? Don't worry, I'll pull the camera down and show you guys if it actually posts. We're not hiding here. And then you'll want to go through and run some stress test on it. Break everything in, monitor temperatures, you know, make sure that everything's okay. So let's see how far this power cable reaches. You know, I'm going to need a keyboard to plug into this also. Sorty, sorty, sorty. Someone wake him up. Come on. Uh-oh, power cable doesn't reach. All right. Um, let me find something to plug it into. Give me just a second, guys. Keep, keep trying to get Sorty to come back. I'm going to get a longer power cable, and then uh, we're ready to test it. So hold on. I'll be right back. Thank you guys for hanging out and sticking through to the end. You guys are troopers.
Did y'all wake him up? Coffee Girl says butter. That might wake him up. That might do it. Whew. You know, even though I've been doing this for a long time, I feel like you still get a little nervous every time you boot up a PC you just built for the first time. You still get you got a little bit of nervousness. Especially if you've ever had one mess up or not power up the first time you boot it up. Now that's always there. All right, I don't know if he's going to show up or not. I don't know. We're plugged into a monitor, so what I'm going to do is bring you guys down. It happens, Wonder. It happens. It does. So that's going to be the monitor we're looking at right there. I'll give you kind of a close-up of the PC as we turn it on. Two different views, right? This is grade A content right here. There we go. Perhaps the light show will wake him. I don't think he's here. I think he fell asleep. All right. You guys ready to press the power button? Another thing that's always funny, a lot of times people forget to flip the switch back here on the power supply right there, and it freaks them out. I've done it. I've done it. You go to turn it on, and you're like, no, it's not powering up, and you just forgot to flip the switch. We ready? All right, here we go. I wish Shorty was here to see it. Best thing to do, though, I do recommend when you go to boot one for the first time, keep your hand on the power cable. Be ready to yank that sucker out in case something goes wrong. No joke. I know that it sounds funny, but it's the truth. As a matter of fact, I'm going to see if I can set you guys up where you can see it. But then I can be ready to yank that cable. Because, uh, again, you do not know. There's my ceiling, by the way. There we go. That's a pretty good view. You might even be able to hear the liquid as it goes through for the first time here when we press the power button. You guys have hung tight two and a half hours, especially considering we had to pull the board out twice. Two and a half hours you have waited for this moment. Here we go, guys. First time Miss PG's gaming PC is booted up, hand on power cable in case it shoots flames. Here we go. Actually, I do not have that on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, that is on. Okay. Now, whoop, hitting it. Here we go. Lots of colors. It's going to reboot a couple of times. This is the first time that it's, it's come on. So that's normal. Let's do this. How about this? We'll kill the lights. All right. Now what we're looking for is for it to post. So we need something on this monitor over here to let me know this computer is alive. All right. It's going to reboot a couple times. This is normal. This is natural. We need that monitor to come up with something to know this computer is alive. There she is, baby. There she is. It's running, guys. It's alive. Can we get some grats in the chat from the PGP members? Come on now. You guys were here for the whole thing. From beginning to end, some of you stopped in in the middle, and that's okay. She's done. Well, okay, the wire management's not done. What do you guys think, though? You think Miss PG will like it? I think she's in the stream, as a matter of fact. I think she's here. So, again, that's an i9 9900K, 32 gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM, uh, the 8 gig RTX 2060 Super, a 700 watt EVGA power supply, and the Kraken X62 water cooler, and Corsair RGB fans all around. 
So again, this is something guys that I love doing and I love sharing this with you guys. This is another thing that I'm very passionate about. As I said, I've had, I worked for that company building PCs for seven years and I've also done it on the side for people as well. So if you have questions about building PCs and whatnot, join the Discord in the description. I will absolutely help you out and possibly in the future, we've discussed starting up PG's PCs. I don't know if that's actually going to be a thing in the future. I can't guarantee it. I don't know what's going to come of it. But maybe in the future, because this is something, this this is what I I know, right? So maybe in the future, it's something that we will kind of dabble in. Uh, so, you know, stick around, see what happens with that. But I really like it. I want to basically, yeah, pull in that nice, cool air across that radiator so at this point yeah what you would do this thing you can actually change the colors on you can go in with some software and, and change that but uh, we'll go through i'll run we'll get windows installed on it and windows 10 professional and then we'll go through and run some stress tests on it make sure break out everything in make sure that it holds up and she'll be ready to rock start installing some games and programs on it yeah, Wonder, absolutely. There's a link to the Discord in the description if you guys have questions about it. Just type it in the general chat, and uh, I'll, I'll try to help you out with anything that I can. It's funny because uh, I'm, I'm going to say this as well for everyone who works in the technology field and with computers. Once you're known as the computer guy, listen, the computer guy, you'll forever and always be the computer guy. I told you guys at the store that I worked at that it closed down last year. If I go to the grocery store, I kid you not, no joke, I'm not making this up. Miss PG can confirm. I can go to the grocery store and people will run me down and say, you're the computer guy. You're the computer guy. I, I need your help. I can't go. I, I told you guys this the other day. I was getting my oil changed at Valvoline. Sitting up on the rack. You get to stay in your car. The guy in the car next to me goes, Hey, you're that computer guy. <laughs> so once you're the computer guy, you're the computer guy. So just so you know, if you're thinking about getting into this kind of stuff, when you're that guy, you're that guy. It never changes. And uh, people will always be looking for help and stuff with it. But I, I enjoy it. It's fun. It's a good time. Like I said, now when Miss PG plays games and plays on her computer, we know that, that you know that you built that. You know, we built this. We put this machine together. We didn't just go out to a store and buy it. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's, it's very rewarding. Got the buggy. Hey, it was good to see you, heck. I'm just entranced with the color changes. Let's get it real up close. Give you guys real up close and personal here. I love that. That's actually really cool. I like it. Stare into the RGB. The nice radiator filling up the front here. Nice glowing RTX. You can kind of see it from the top as well. Pretty cool. And then, of course, from the rear. Check out that booty. Check out that booty, huh? But like I said, I'm not going to bore you guys with the all the cable management and whatnot. I just wanted you guys to see her boot up. Make sure she posts. One more time. One more time for Sorty when he watches it later. She posted, Sorty. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up. I think we're going to wrap it up. She still likes it. We've got Miss PG's approval, guys. She likes it. Maybe they mean that guy who streams. <laughs> I'm very passionate about streaming and creating content on YouTube, building computers, and eventually owning my own arcade. That's what I'm most passionate about in life. PG likes that booty. You can ask Miss PG. It's usually the first thing that I notice on stuff. When I look at a car, COX Forever, when we went to go buy our new car back in 2014, the first thing I did is walk behind it, and I was like, okay, okay. When all the Mustangs that I used to have, I used, at one point I had five different Mustangs, or I have went through five different Mustangs. And what do I do when I go up to it? When I go to get in, I take in my groceries. I'd smack that rear bumper. 
I'm look I'm looking at the lines, the the booty of the car. You know, it's 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 real important. But I hope I hope <laughs> I hope that you guys had fun. I kind of like this lighting. Maybe I should have just kept it like this. I like this. I thought it would be too dark in here. But we did it right at under three hours, two hours and 45 minutes in total to build this computer and to plug everything up and it posts. So I would say realistically three hours in total uh, putting everything together. And keep in mind that was while streaming and interacting, conversating and whatnot. So you, anyone can build a computer. I promise you it's, it's really not that difficult Anyone can do it if you're on the fence about it, it, it. You can. There are YouTube tutorials you can watch. Or again, I I'm more than happy to help you out with what I can. But I'm kind of just sitting here for a few more minutes, just taking it in, making sure that she doesn't turn off. Nice cool air coming through there at the moment. Yeah, she's gonna love it. This board has Wi-Fi built in, which of course we're gonna hardwire it, but it does have Bluetooth built in as well. You can plug a little uh, antenna back in the back. It's got a couple, it's got three USB 3.1s on it, a USB type C on the back, two 3.0s and four 2.0s. Digital audio out. Got a lot of features. Cost, I would say, ooh, cost. Now, I got, we got, I got the 9900K and the Z390 Aorus Ultra board for free. So, I would say total cost in these parts. What would you say, Miss PG? I know people are heading out. What would you say, Miss PG, that we spent on everything or that you spent on everything? It was 1100 with what we had to buy. So take into account the i9-9900K. What are those, like $400 now? So we're at $1,500, and that board is at like $300. This is about an $1,800 to $2,000 computer. Somewhere around in there, $1,800 to $2,000. And one last time, that's the i9-9900K. That's the Aorus Z390 Ultra motherboard. Uh, 32 gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM, the Kraken X62 water cooler, and the 8 gig RTX uh, 2060 Super, the 1 terabyte 860 Evo Samsung SSD, and the 700 watt EVGA 80 plus bronze power supply. I stayed at work 20 extra minutes to watch this. Got a jet now. So glad to finally catch you live. That means a ton, Wonder, that you stayed. Uh, to watch this. Thank you, my friend. That means a ton. I really appreciate that. I think we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to play an outro screen just like I normally do. Again, let me know if you guys can do one last thing for me. If you're either watching this VOD or you're one of the 41 people still here, when this video goes up, it takes YouTube a couple hours to do it. Can you guys leave a comment on the video and let me know if you enjoyed a stream like this? I know that it's asking a lot. And I know that maybe... 10% 10, 10 of the people here will actually do it. But if you guys could leave a comment on the video when it's up and just let me, you don't even, have, it can be any kind of comment. Just be like, hey, PG, or cool PC, or hey, had fun hanging out. If you guys could let me know that, that you enjoyed a, a stream like this, because this is very different for me. I don't usually do content like this. It's all about the games. But I really wanted to hang out with you guys and build a PC together. I think it was fun. So thank you for all the love and the support tonight. I did get some donations tonight, which is mind-blowing. Lawson with the top dono on the day, the $19.99. Nicholas came through with a five. Carol with a five. My Chemical Crash with a $1.99. Ak Ak with a five. Um, also another name that did donate. Thank you. I'm not going to uh, mention that <clears throat> out loud. VK Cabrera with the five. Uh, and who else? I think we had one more person. Let me double check. That's it. That's it. So we named them all. So I'm going to play, as usual, the outro screen. You know what? Hold on. I got to plug my monitor back up. Hold on, guys. You got to hang out for two more minutes. I can't play my outro screen. We've got this plugged into that monitor. Hold on. <laughs> all you can afford is a hot five. Hey, you get there. You get there. Hard work, you know? 
Hard work pays off, my friend. I promise. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, or, you know, just, just, it'll pay off, trust me. Really afford to pay attention. All right, I'm going to play an outro screen. If anybody's new here, what we do is we leave kind and encouraging words to each other down in the chat to help each other get through the day, the rest of the day today, maybe tomorrow. You never know what somebody might need to hear. So I'm going to play a little outro screen here and I just say, say something. Say something nice. And uh, love you guys. Thank you for all the love and the support. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow night. Peace out, guys. Love you guys.